How many know that powerful name? Come on, how many know that that it's a powerful name? That it's a loving name? It's a wonderful name. Oh, I must be by myself this morning. It's a powerful name. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Nothing can stand against the name of Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. The name of Jesus. The scripture says that at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That, that, that name has power. That in the midst of all that we're going through, sometimes it's just, sometimes all you can do is just call on his name. You may not, you may not be a preacher, you may not be able to sing, you may not have studied the scriptures and, and have hermeneutical excellence and homiletical uh, genius, you may not have spent time in a seminary, you may not be the best prayer, but if you can just say Jesus, sometimes that's all the time you have. You ever, you ever been in trouble? You ever been about to about to wreck into something or crash into something? Jesus, just the just the name Jesus is prayer. I don't know if you know that or not, but just calling on the name Jesus, that's prayer. Because Jesus responds to when, when you call Jesus, that means there, there's faith there. That's an exercise of faith. And, and God responds to, to, that, to that faith. He will never. Uh, he never not. He never doesn't respond to his children uh, calling into his name. God, thank you so much to our praise team for uh, for uh, setting the atmosphere for uh, our for our message and for our worship for today. I am. I'm excited about this message. Uh, and and and. And, and, and I'm as interested as you are of where the Lord's leading us today. Praise the Lord. Uh, we started last week a series called Out with the Old and In with the New. Uh, and that's from uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses, verse 17. Very familiar passage of Scripture to all of us. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, the new creation uh, has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And the key to that is that if anyone is in Christ, when we, when we are in Christ, that, 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 that is, that's what salvation is. Salvation, we, are, we are saved uh, from our sins through uh, Jesus' salvific work, this saving work on the cross of Calvary. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we, we are in Christ. And when we are in Christ, we become a new creation. That's one of the blessings of, of being in Christ. Old things are gone. New, the new is here. We say, well, what do we mean the old? Our, our old ways, those ways that were uh, detrimental to, to ourselves, those ways did not, did, that did not bring glory to, to God. And so those things that we, that we, that we may have done in the world that, that just weren't pleasing to God, and, we, and we, we may have been ashamed of, things that we thought that we would have to live with for the rest of our lives, things that we had done in the past that we thought that, that were unforgivable. And we learned that God loves us so much that no matter what we've done in the past, God's grace is sufficient. And when we accept Christ into our lives as our Lord and Savior, we are in Christ. And because we're in Christ, there's some, the, the new, what are the new things? What are the new things that have come? Well, one, one thing we talked about last week was a, a new wardrobe. We have a, a new wardrobe, and, and that meant that we, we put off some things, that in response to that faith, there's some things that we put off. We put off uh, uh, malice. We put off the way we treat other people, uh, uh, um, uh, the way the old creation, the old creature may have uh, dealt with people, maybe who were different than us, maybe who looked different from us or talked different from us or from a different, all the many different ways in which we, uh, we our old creation um, uh, uh, operated, we put those things off. All those ways that were not honorable to God and pre pleasing to God, we put those things off and we put on love. We put on those things that, that, uh, that show that are representative of, of, of a child of God. So we have a new wardrobe, this new creation. But then we also have a new, a new song. Brother uh, Alatif read for us 
out of the Psalms today, and he read the 40th Psalm to us. The 40th Psalm is an interesting uh, a psalm. Uh, it's a psalm, one of the Psalms of David, and, and, and it's uh, very interesting because of the predicament that David finds himself in when he, when he writes this psalm, where he, he's either writing it in reflection, uh, reflecting on a time where he found himself in a dire situation. And he describes this dire situation as a pit. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, praise God, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Just for a few moments today, I want to preach from the subject, a new song, a new song. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Break us and melt us, mold us and fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, this text, quickly, uh, as I mentioned, is a text written, a psalm, a song, uh, because the psalms, all 150 of them that we have in, in the, the Old Testament canon of the, of the, of the Bible, is, uh, is a song, it's a hymn book. The, the children of Israel and those in the uh, early uh, Christian church this was their hymn book. In some of our churches, we have uh, red hymnals or blue hymnals or green hymnals and different hymn books. Well, this is, this, that's not a new thing, right? The, the children of Israel had a hymn book, and as part of the, the liturgy or part of their worship service, they would sing these hymns. Now, we mainly read them, but they would sing these hymns. And this hymn in particular, this psalm in particular, is uh, w- one of David recollecting we believe, scholars believe, a time where he was uh, on the run from uh, Saul and Saul's henchmen. And, and Saul uh, was seeking to take David out. He understood that David uh, was uh, God's new choice to be the new king, and, and there was jealousy. Da- at first, Saul liked David. David was a, a musician at heart, and David was able to play different instruments and sing, and it brought, uh, t- to King Saul, it brought comfort and solace to him. And so David, uh, 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 Saul, at, at the beginning, liked th- having David around. David gained uh, reputation for being a giant slayer, a giant killer. We know the story. Uh, David, David, as a young shepherd boy, uh, takes out the, uh, the Philistine giant uh, Goliath, when none of Saul's uh, uh, soldiers, none of Saul's uh, greatest warriors could take him out, but this little shepherd boy in his early teens comes and with a sling and a stone takes out Goliath. And as he grows and and matures and begins to serve uh, uh, Saul in various ways, uh, word gets around and Saul begins to get jealous. See, not all songs make you feel good. So there were songs uh, that David would sing to Saul that would make him feel good, but there were other songs that that Saul would hear, the people would sing. uh, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. That's that's a song he didn't like. Not all songs make us feel good, and that's the reason why uh, I believe God gives us a new song. Because not all songs, all songs are, are, are representative of feelings. There's something about music that, that, that affects us uh, in, 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 a, in, in a way. And, and, and music is universal. You can go to a concert 
and maybe someone sings a song in a language you don't understand, but you still feel a certain way, the, whether it's the instrumentation, whether it's the uh, emotion of the person who's singing that comes across that even though they may be si- singing in, in Latin or singing in uh, Italian or singing in French and you have no clue what they're saying, you can still be impacted by the song based on the instrumentation. You can be impacted by the song based on the way that they emote in, in, when, in, in which they sing. Music has always uh, had an impact on our lives, in particular in, in, in the church, in particular the Christian church. There are some faiths you go to, there, there's no music playing. You, you, uh, music is not a part of all faith traditions, but in the house of God, in the, the Christian faith, uh, music has always been... And songs have always been in, an integral part of our worship. We, we, we speak to God and we worship God through song and through, through our music. There's just something about, about music that transcends language, culture, uh, generations, uh, 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 nationalities. Music and songs are, are universal. I, when, when I began to uh, 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 sing in, in high school in, in choirs, in, in men's glee, and in, in the different choirs that I sang in, there would be songs we would sing, uh, either they were in English and I had no clue what, they, what we were singing about, and I share this all the time, we, um, we would sing, and this I guess was at a time where you could sing certain type of songs in a public uh, setting, and, and, and I don't know if that's often the case anymore, especially in, in high schools. You know, Christmas concerts have become uh, winter festivals and, and things of that nature. And we sing about snowmen and, and snow, so, so all fights and, and jingle bells. But we don't really necessarily sing about the reason for that time of the season. But when I was in high school, back in the early 30s, um, we, we, would sing, we would sing songs that as I recollect back to were deep and heavy in, in theology. I, I, I didn't go to a Catholic school or to a private Christian school. I was in a public school, and at Christmas, every Christmas, we would sing uh, uh, particular songs, uh, and, and one I can remember that I didn't quite understand as a 15 and 16-year-old, but I went back and read the words in my 30s, and I, I remember we were Dana. We were, we were living over. We were living in Pickerington, over on Cannon Ridge, and, I, and our office was out in that loft. And I remember reading the words of that song and just bawling, as uh, thinking to thinking to myself how wonderful God is and how wonderful God was to expose me to His Word through this song. And I had no idea He was planting a seed that that I had no idea He was doing. Let all mortal flesh keep silent, and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly-minded, for with blessing in his hands. Christ our God to earth descended, our full homage to demand. I don't know. I, I, that, that's, oh, I just made sure I knew my parts, Jason. You know, I, I, was, I was a bass, and so I had to make sure I knew my part, but I didn't really know what the words meant. And, and Christ our God to earth descended, our for, for us to honor and to pay homage to him because we didn't really understand the fullness of God's love. We, he tried, they tried to get us in, in acknowledging and following laws and, and trying and following the Levitical code and, and, and understanding the, the, the fullness of God's love. And finally, God says, they will not get it until I show them. And so the word that was in the beginning became flesh and came and dwelt among us so we could truly understand the word. We couldn't really get the word in written form, but we get the word as the word is revealed to us in flesh and comes to us incarnate. My goodness. And so, as, new, as a new creation, uh, we not only ought to have a new wardrobe, we ought to have a new song. And this is not, this is, the the amazing thing about this is we don't have to figure out the song for ourselves. The the, the text is is very clear what happens. David, he says, I'm waiting patiently for the Lord. And I'm patient even though I'm in this pit, this slimy pit, this muddy pit. 
And I don't know what slimy, muddy pit you're in right now, but there's, there's a lesson to be learned here from David that whenever we're in what we're going through, as, often, as uncomfortable as it is, as slimy and as muddy as it is, uh, that we ought to wait patiently for the Lord. And, and if we wait patiently, uh, David uh, informs us that God will hear our cry. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me, and he heard my cry. My goodness, we, just, we, missed, we missed that in the text. I'm in a pit. David's in a pit. And he, he cries to the Lord. And what does it say? It says that the Lord turned to me. That means that, that, that he was in the pit with me. Gosh, look, 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 look at this. That, that we are never alone. When the scripture says God will never leave me nor forsake me, that God is always with me, that God is a very present help in the time of trouble, that in the midst of my trouble, that I can rest assured that when, while I'm in my trouble, God is with me there. He didn't say that he looked down on me. He didn't say in a few minutes he came to me. He said that while I was waiting patiently on God, God turned to me and heard my cry. All right. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that just makes me shout. Then it says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit. He didn't pull me up out of the slimy pit. He lifted me out of the slimy pit because he was in the pit with me. Gosh. And, and so so uh, 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 as a new creation uh, and old things have passed away and, and new things, the new has come, the new that has come, one of the new things is that God dwells with me. God resides with me. God, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, God is living with me. He's never far from me. He's always with me. And so he, he lifts me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, and he sets my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. And then... So he has this firm place to stand. He set me on solid rock. So all of us, when we come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we are placed on solid rock. We have a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. And when we have a firm foundation in Jesus Christ, he gives us a new song. We don't have to go find one. We don't have to go looking for one. We don't have to go create one. God gives us a new song. It's right there in the text. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. You say, well, uh, what's the new song that he gives me, and how is it new? Well, first of all, he gave us the, the songs of the Scripture. I, I said before that he gave us, uh, 150 of them uh, for us to go to. If, if, if even, even if you don't know the songs yet, you can go to the Psalms, and, and we, we've got, kind of gotten away from this because we've created new songs, which is what we're supposed to do. The scripture is replete with, uh, with us, especially in the Psalms, uh, with God telling us to sing a new song. But there, there are some old songs that are old, but they're new to us. It may be an old song. It may be a song that has been written years and centuries ago, but, but it's new to you because you've never sung it. You never heard it. You never walked it. You never lived it. Look at the songs that, that, that we have just in, in, in the, the psalm book or the hymn book of Scripture. Look at Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringing forth fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. Oh, maybe you need another one. Psalm 23. Listen to this song. Isn't it beautiful? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy 
rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You need another song? Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall descend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity or sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek his face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You looking for a song? We got 150 of them. What about Psalm 27? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. In his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. What about Psalm 91? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Though shalt, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, or for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh at darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Maybe Psalm 121. Y'all, I'm going to keep on singing. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He shall not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth uh, thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade at thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Well, maybe y'all know Psalm 150. Surely you know this song. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Somebody please praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him among the sound, uh, loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If, 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 you're, if you don't have a song, the blessing and the good news about the goodness of our God is he will put a new song in my mouth. I don't have to worry about coming up with one. God will give me a new song because the old songs I was singing are not appropriate 
for this new creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's some old songs I used to sing. And I need us to get out of the, the mindset of what, I need us to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritually, there were some songs and some ways that I walked and some clothes that I wore that were not appropriate, that were not holy, that were not righteous enough for this new creation. I, 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 now I know there's some, there's some songs that all of us grew up on that you wouldn't, that, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't even want your kids listening to. See, Jan, Jan, Jan Franklin, I can see, Jan, I can see Marion smile through the mask. She's like, Lord have mercy. I, that was my jam, too. If there's just some songs that you, that you, you'd be embarrassed if your kids knew you listened to them. I'm, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. I knew there was some songs uh, that, uh, that we sang to. I bet you, just get the skip button, right? Do we just, just hurry up, mute that real quick, and just get through? They were, they were representative of our life and our way of life during that time. And that's not an indictment on, uh, on, on us because if I'm honest with myself, if I'm skipping through on Pandora and one of those songs come on, I might be, get, my, get my jam on. But even in our spiritual walk, there, before we came to know Jesus Christ in the free pardon of our sin, there were songs that, were, that identified our pre-conversion selves. So, so, so uh, the scripture, God, go, go ahead and preach, God. Uh, the scripture is full of, of God, especially in the New Testament, especially Jesus, changing old things into new things. He would often change uh, the names of his disciples when they come to follow him. So Peter was, was, was actually Simon, right? Simon. And, 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 and sometimes when, when, after he uh, was following Jesus, when, si when Peter's pre-conversion uh, uh, personality would rise up, Jesus, in a reminder that you hadn't always been Peter, were referred to him in his pre-conversion name. Y'all don't believe me. Look, somebody turn to Luke 22. Y'all don't have to do it. Luke 22, uh, 31. Simon, Simon. J this is, this is, this is uh, Jesus talking to Peter. Simon, Simon. Satan has desire to sift you as wheat. Uh, Peter, y'all know Peter. Peter has already been told he's going to deny Jesus three times. Uh, and so, 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 so Jesus changes names it, it to, as, as, a, as a continual reminder to those who have been converted to this new way that you hadn't always been who you are now, and not only do you have a new wardrobe and a new song, but then sometimes you have a new name. All, and, and so, so this, this understanding of this new song is one that, that we can rest assured that God gives us a new song. And there's something about the Psalms in particular, that talk about new songs. The Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, often refer to new songs, S-O-N-G-S. And so if we were to look at, for instance, Psalm 98, verses 1 through 6, because uh, one, there's two things, and I'm, and I'm in my seat, that I want us to understand is that a, a new song is a song of a new heart. That, that a, a new song is, is a representative or is shown by, by someone who has a new heart. And a new heart uh, 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 sings a song of joy. Psalm 98, 1 through 6, uh, uh, the psalmist says, Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand uh, and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to, to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Watch this. Shout! For joy 
to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the king. The, the, a new song, uh, that, that, it, it, uh, you ever been someplace and the, 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 the instrumentation is, is perfect? Y'all doing, y'all doing y'all's thing. Josh is, and I'm not saying this happened here. I'm using, I'm using the, these instrumentalists as a, this, y'all was doing this someplace else. Praise the Lord. Derek is, Derek is just, he on a different level, right? He just beaten. And wherever you are, the instrumentation was wonderful. The lyrics were beautiful. They were, they were whoever wrote these lyrics, they were, they were outstanding. Uh, um, the, the, the composition, the flow, Everything was great, and then the, then the person sang, and it was flat. Just something wasn't right. I don't, mean, I don't mean their voice was flat. I mean, there was, just, there was just something about the song. You knew the words deserved a better presentation, right? I got some, some of my daughter's friends are here. They all musical theater folks, and so they, they, they understand what I mean. You just... The, 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 the person singing did not emote, and the emotions did not match what they were singing. Uh, and, and you can take, and their voice might be beautiful, but the emotion didn't match. And you might get somebody whose voice may not be as good, but they sang that thing to the point where you understood that there was something in their heart that came through in their singing. That's what a new song is. A new song is one that is identified by somebody who knows that if it had not been for the Lord who created this new creation, who allowed the old things to pass away and the new has come, that if that is my, real, if that is my reality, then the way I sing, don't, let's, let's, we're not talking about how, how it sounds, if the person's going to get a Grammy, if it's perfectly in pitch, I'm talking about the way they sang. They sang with joy. We often get caught up in, in the musicality and understand that the sweet fragrance of that, uh, uh, of that offering, of that song, is, a, is, is sweet to the nostrils of Almighty God. And it doesn't have to, that had to do with the key. It has to do with the heart of the person who has the song. And if God has given you a new song, then you ought to sing it with joy. If, I, if, if, if God has given you a new song, you ought to sing it as one who's grateful that God gave his only begotten son that I might have life and have it everlasting. My God, a, a, a song, a new song is a song of the heart. And a song of the heart is one where the singing, the sound is one of joy. It comes from a place of joy. It comes from a joyful heart. It comes from a, a place of gratitude to the one who gave me the song in the first place. We can't ever forget that God gave us the song. But not only is the song, a new song, a song of a new heart, but a new song is a song of a new way. It's a song of a new way. Uh, the my, my, my seminary on Saturday, folks know that when we were, uh, uh, when we first became Christians, Christianity is born out of Judaism. The first Jews, oh, excuse me, the first Christians were Jews, and they weren't called Christians. We know that in the book of, of Acts. They, were, they weren't called Christians until Antioch. They were called people of the way, this new way. When Jesus talks to his disciples the night before uh, his crucifixion in that upper room, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The, and so if you have a new song, it's indicative of a, a song of a new way. A, it's a song of salvation. Look at our text from this morning, Psalm 40, verse, and we look at verse 3. It says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to, for, uh, to our God. Why? Because many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. It's not only a song of salvation, it's a song of evangelism. 
that, that you begin when you have this new song that there ought to be something about your dress spiritually. Come on now. Don't, I, I mean, I, I, I know, I know the blue suit is, but I'm not talking about the physical. I'm talking about your walk, your spiritual being, the way you encounter and engage with people, your conversation, your countenance, your, the, the, your, your very being ought to be a reflection that the old is gone and the new has come. People that you've known for a while ought to notice the difference. And I was like, well, they, that is, that's not how they responded to that situation in the past. I remember that sister, boy, well, she, she, would, she would tear you a new one. I know we shouldn't say that, in the, but y'all, tear. If, if, you, if you say it a certain way, she would roll her neck. She would, she would tell you how a T.I. is, but now all of a sudden, she doesn't respond in the same way. There ought to be something about our countenance that reflects that we are a new creation with a new wardrobe and a new song because we have a, 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 a new heart and, a new, and we're walking in a new way. Psalm 96, 1 and 2 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim salvation day after day. That, this, that a new song ought to proclaim salvation. That it ought to be a real song, a real gospel song. If we look at the scripture we just looked at, Psalm 98, 1 through 6, when we talked about uh, a new heart, it opens up by saying, that sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Verse 2, the Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. That as a new creation who has received salvation, then our response to this uh, uh, gift of salvation is that we allow God to give us a new song. Matter of fact, if I make it even more plain, we allow God to sing for us. God, God, God sings for, God becomes our voice and he places a song on our mouths and sings. I believe if we, if we are doing this thing right and we are surrendering ourselves truly, that God will praise God's self through us as willing vessels who say, I'm giving it and I'm turning it all over to you. I surrender it all to you. And Lord, you sing and you praise your own self. Through He did it when it, when it was just him in, in creation. He says that after he created uh, the heavens and the earth, he said that it was good. He patted his own self on the back. You know why? Because what nobody else there to do it. It was just he and him all by himself. And when he, he created that, he, in a sense, sang a, sang a song of gratitude to his own self. Y'all, that's just the kind of God we serve. I, 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 um, I like to sing. I don't sing that well. I don't sing as well as my daughter does. Um, I do sing better than my wife does, though, but that's, a, that's another story. Um, and, and, and I didn't think I could sing early on. I, I started off as, as an instrumentalist, right? So when I was in school, my mom, first instrument she bought me was a, well, the first instrument she bought was a piano, so I took piano lessons. And then uh, when I got in middle school, you had a choice. You were either going to be in instrumental music or you were going to be in vocal music. And I was like, I'm not going to be in vocal music. Even though if I, if I had known better, I, I would have went to vo vocal music earlier because that's where the ladies were. But that's another story for another time. And so I ended up with over in the instrumental music with the, uh, with the, Derek ain't here, with the instrument, oh, there he is, with the, with the you know, the kids with the, with the bad acne and stuff like that. We were over, we were over there. The ones, those of us who wore glasses and played, you know, we, we were walking home on the bus with our instruments and just all this extra stuff. That Derek know what I'm talking about. Derek, Derek he thought it was cool because all he had to carry was some sticks home. But you know you had to carry that snare. You know you got to carry that snare gum and yeah. And so, I ended up there, and when I got in high school, my freshman year, I, I, I didn't play football my freshman year. I was in the marching band, and they talked me into going from the trumpet, because they had a whole bunch of trumpets, but they needed some lower instruments and, and more uh, brass, and so I ended up playing the baritone horn. Then I ended up with the sousaphone, 
Y'all know, y'all know what sousaphone is. Sousaphone is the tuba, but it's made for marching band because the, the horn uh, comes out, right? So you wrapped up and you wrapped up in there. And so I played that. And, and it was great. But I don't know, somehow, I think by, by 10th grade or by 9th grade, maybe I figured out that all, all the sisters was over there in vocal music. Like, where are y'all at? At, at, at my high school, in, this is a... This is the uh, uh, 1998, 1989, 1988, 89 school year, my freshman year. And there were maybe 1,200 kids in the school total. At fourth period, there will be 130 kids. More than 10% of the kids will be in the senior choir in the choir room. We had to bring in extra chairs. There were chairs. We were locked to the doors. And I peeked in, and I was like, Okay, I need to be, I need to be here. But I, you couldn't just jump as a freshman to senior. So I was in the junior choir, then I was in men's glee. By sophomore year, I was in se- senior choir, men's glee. By so- junior year, I was in senior choir, men's glee, show choir. And senior choir, men's glee, show choir. I finished high school with about 14 credits of music. I had a little specialization tag on there. I didn't even know that that was such a thing, but I had, I had all these specializations in music. And so, uh, uh, when I, f- I remember getting in, and, and, and um, um, you're all kind of auditioning, and you got to find out what parts you sing. And so I was pretty much <coughs> always, <coughs> even at an early age, had a manly voice. And so I sang, I sang bass. And we would sing, actually, y'all, did my kid, we would sing in, in men's, qu- men's glee in high school, we would sing eight parts. First and second bass, first and second baritone, first, uh, is that right? Yeah. That, what was that? Tenors. It can't be four tenor parts. Maybe that wasn't a two tenor parts. Six three. Baritone bass. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of uh I'm thinking of women. First, second alto, first, second, second, second. Yeah, so a part. And so uh sometimes a tenor part would be a better part. And I'd be trying. Man, I would try to get up there, but I just couldn't do it. That's one of my voice, especially puberty. Well, puberty <laughs> it just wasn't gonna happen. And, and I'd be so jealous of Will Jones and Vince Briley. These cats uh, uh, had these wonderful tenor voices. And I'm down. But, but then, but, but, but Mr. Wallace, Phil Wallace knew that he would find us some songs that accentuated that baritone and bass part. So we sing some of them, some of them sailor chants, and, those, uh, uh, and, and we, we just, we really knock it out the park then. That, Hannah, Hannah has a beautiful alto voice. She thinks she wants to sing Soprano. She thinks she can. She thinks she can do it, but she really can't. She really can't do it. I mean, that's just a different level. She got her daddy's kind of deep voice, and all of us have a part that we sing. You might not be able to sing, but your voice places you in one of these parts. You, as generally, men are going to be bass, tenor. Some men can sing in an alto. Some women can sing tenor, uh, and some there's some crossover in those middles. But and most people, I would say, probably fall in, into baritone, and alto. It takes a special person to really knock it out the park in the soprano, especially as a soloist, and it takes a special person <coughs> to really be able to hold down that bass. All of us, our voices are, are designed by God to hold some, 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 uh, some range that places us in. But a few years ago, my, uh, my pastor a father of the ministry, uh, Shedrick Fowler, uh, revealed to us that he actually, he sings a, a different part. He, it, he, he, that he doesn't even sing alto or soprano or bass or baritone. It was, it was amazing because I had never, I've been in music for, for a couple decades and I had never heard that there were any other parts than that, right? And so we, we were, I was leaning in. He got my attention. There's, a, there's another part. And he said, actually, yes. Um, he says, I sing tenor, and I can sing baritone, but there's another part that I also sing. I was like, I was like wow, I, I couldn't believe. I, I just remember him talking about this. He said, and actually, all children of God sing this part. I was like, really? Y'all didn't tell me this. I've been saved for 25 years, and y'all, nobody told me there's this, there's this new part you sing, that no matter if you sing bass, no matter if you sing baritone, no matter if you sing alto or soprano, that you can sing all those parts, but once you become a new creation, once the old has gone and the new has come, you, you not only sing bass or baritone or alto or soprano, but you sing because. <laughs> you sing 
because. He's like, well, well what does that mean? Or what, what, how, how do I practice for that? I was like, you sing because God loves you. You sing because God gave his life for you. You sing, as the songwriter says, because you're happy. You sing because you're free. The song says his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. I sing because while I was still in my sin, Christ died for me. I sing because early on the third day, after he had died on Calvary's cross, he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. I sing because I'm a new creation. I sing because the old is gone. I sing because the new has come. I sing because I have a new wardrobe. I sing because I have a new song. I sing because I have a new heart. I sing because I'm walking in a new way. And if you would come back next Sunday, you'll know and we'll talk about the new song we have and we sing because we have a new home, that the old is gone and the new has come, that it's out with the old and in with the new, out with the old uh, wardrobe, out with the old song, and out with the old home because we now have a new wardrobe and a new song and we have a new home that we're, that we're on our way to. God bless you. May heaven smile. I sing because. I sing because God is able. I sing because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. I sing because uh, God looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. I sing because while I was in my sin, Scripture says that God loved me so much. I, just, you, you, we got to learn to make this personal. He loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross for me. For me. And if you have never accepted the gift, if the gift is still sitting under that salvation tree, if you will, I mean, the gift does no good if it's just sitting under the tree and the person who the gift is meant for never uh, receives the gift and opens the gift up. It's not truly a gift until the person receives it. And so if you never received it, never received this gift and the free pardon of your sin, we invite you now to, to pray to God right where you are, to repent of your uh, sinful and your sins and to Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Accept and acknowledge and profess your faith that Jesus is the Son of the living God who uh, died on Calvary's cross and rose again on the third day with all power in his hand, sits on the right hand of our Father in heaven and makes intercession for you and me. If you've made that confession and that profession of faith right now, salvation is yours, that the Holy Spirit has now come to take residence in your heart. And we invite you to reach out to us so that we can take you to the waters of baptism, welcoming you into the fellowship of the church and the fellowship of faith. Maybe you've already um, given your life to the Lord. You're already a baptized believer in Jesus Christ, but you're looking for a church home. And we invite you to consider Family Fellowship Church. We are... We have been worshiping via live stream and virtually for over a year now. And for a few weeks, we've been gradually getting back to, to some semblance of uh, pre-COVID -co, pre normal. And, uh, and, and we're looking forward to, as the weather gets warmer and the summer comes, to having uh, some worship services outside. And, and so we uh, ask you to, to continue to keep us in your prayers. Uh, and they continue to look out for uh, announcements from the church about uh, our uh, extension and expansion of our in-person worship as we move throughout the year and as we more people are becoming uh, vaccinated. And uh, we will continue to lift up God in whatever way God allows us to do it and provides us with opportunities to do it.